Now, in this session, we'll be discussing about what is Six Sigma and how Six Sigma came into being and what are the different uh, levels of Six Sigma processes are available and what is a Six Sigma score and how Six Sigma is like, you know, applied in industries uh, by calculating different Six Sigma measures like process capability index, yield, and many more things. So this is one of the very important topic um it, it is not like you know uh, people think uh, six sigma is used only in the manufacturing industry it is not the case six sigma has been used in all business processes in all functions including in uh, it it years and uh, financial um, organizations as well including stock market Okay. So it is the Six Sigma is a structured problem solving methodology which aims at improving customer satisfaction and company profitability by improving the underlying process. So actually, no Six Sigma is a management strategy which provides. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh -huh. Yes. Ma'am, we could see the front slide alone, ma'am. Like it was still in Six Sigma, it haven't moved to any other slide. Yeah, yeah. I'm just giving an introduction. Don't worry. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So if this is a management strategy, you know, which gives a roadmap to a continuously improve business processes to eliminate your defects. It can be in a manufacturing process, it can be in a, a IT process or a stock market based business. It can be in any businesses we can apply Six Sigma. Okay, so but we really don't know how to improve a process. We sometimes think, you know, uh, achieving a 99.9% um, quality is, is good, but it is not okay when we like, compare that with our day to day lives. For example, if we have 99.9% .9 of quality, which means we can accept 1000 defects per million. Okay, so in that case, if we are allowing 99.9% .9 of quality, we allow to grow 4,000 prescriptions to go wrong every year throughout the world. And we might allow 3,000 newborns to be accidentally falling on the floor from the hands of doctors or nurses every year. I mean, this data is kind of very old, but still think of the consequences when 3,000 newborns just fell on the floor. And if we just rely on 99.9% .9 of quality, Two of the airports in America will never land. Maybe shortcomings. And 400 letters per hour will not reach the destination. So, and just uh, think about the same prediction uh, applying for in healthcare, in disease prediction or medications, right? In pharmaceuticals, this is this 99.9 percent .9 is not actually acceptable. So let's see how can we deal with this problem. So to to our um, boon, we got Six Sigma so that we can escape from all these kind of mishappenings. So how the Six Sigma came into being? So Six Sigma, you know, it came into being in 1980s in the Motorola factory. So I believe everybody knows about Motorola, cell phone manufacturer. So right now, even right now, and also in the olden days, quality is an important discriminative factor across various industries. Several strategies have evolved over several decades to improve the quality in the manufacturing as well as in service industries. So this Six Sigma was introduced by William Smith, who was an employee of Motorola in the 1980s. So actually, he introduced this to, to reduce the manufacturing defects. So this is one of the Motorola is one of the very few companies that adopted Six Sigma being the inventor. After Motorola, General Electric adopted the Six Sigma technologies, methodologies in the mid 1990s. So this Six Sigma is also coined by the same person, William Smith, who is a reliability engineer at Motorola. So he pioneered this concept to deal with the expected failure rate. So he proposed this 
as a goal to improve the reliability and quality of products so until then you know three sigma deviations were allowed from the mean but after william smith proposed this model people adopted the six sigma technologies so six deviations from the mean so we had low specification limit upper specification limit don't worry bother about that we will be discussing all this later so earlier it was uh, three deviations were allowed but right now six deviations are is considered a standard procedure because of william smith so after all these things all the organizations started adopting six sigma methodologies so earlier businesses were following total quality management business process reengineering methodologies to work on the quality so when six sigma came into being they moved on to six sigma and later they are now recently using lean six sigma okay but right now we'll be discussing only about six sigma methodologies in the session so do you think like you know the six sigma is just for manufacturing no, i've already told you this so it is for any business so it has been like proved successful in various businesses including banking retail software medical and all other businesses in all the different functions so you can't say it's only uh, useful in operations it's useful in sales marketing it finance customer services human resources in all the business areas six sigma can be used okay so how can you implement all this how how this is possible because it's only invented i mean it is only like you know uh, proposed for you know decreasing the expected failure rate in a manufacturing factory so how, how we can do this because you know this six sigma aims at you know decreasing the defects or decreasing the delays so that's what happens in all the other functions right so in sales we actually want to like you know deliver the products when the customer asks so we we do not want any delays so in that case yes we can apply that okay in it we actually always have to like you know formulate a process which so that we can deliver the project on time so here also delay becomes a factor so everywhere you always have to like you know decrease your delays and defects so in that case you can always apply six sigma so what is this six sigma actually so everybody knows six sigma right so it is just a statistical concept so that we can able to measure the variation right i believe everybody knows about standard deviation and variance we have studied this long long back and sigma value so most of people like confuse sigma with sigma value sigma value is actually a number which gives us a number of defects per million opportunities so it's not about number of defects per million products produced it's completely different it's about defects per million opportunities that if there is you know million opportunities available to go wrong when two things go wrong so how many defects actually like you know happened how many things have went wrong out of the million opportunities so that is about sigma value so six sigma so when you have a deviation of six from your mean value you you are allowed to have 3.4 defects per million opportunities so if we follow this we will be able to get 99.99966 percentage of defects free okay so don't worry about this we'll be like going in all this in very detail okay so i'm just giving you overview here okay so when you have a sigma value of 0 to low you know there's going to be like you know a lot of um, defects possibilities and the sigma value of 3 to 5 is kind of middle where you will be able to meet most of the customer specifications so we already like you know uh, know that aiming a improved customer satisfaction and company profitability is a major goal for six sigma right so so if you are like able to like go for a uh, aim for a six level high six sigma value you will be able to like meet all the customer specifications we will be able to satisfy the customer better okay 
so i mean uh, by right now we'll be able to like you know get a glimpse of what is sigma six sigma we will just have look into the definitions here so we know sigma is a variable factor which stands for standard deviation okay so when you square standard deviation we get variance okay six sigma is defined as a quality improvement philosophy which focuses on eliminating the defects by reducing your variance in the process okay it can be manufacturing process or any other business process so if you are able to eliminate defects by reducing the variance in your process you can call that process as a six sigma a defect is nothing but you know an measurable outcome which is not in the acceptable limits okay for example let's imagine i am manufacturing a you know water bottle which is of length some uh, maybe we can say 30 cm and width 5 cm okay so uh, maybe i can I, i can still accept a water bottle which is like you know 10.2 cm and 5.1 cm width yes maybe i can allow that which is acceptable but anything beyond that is not acceptable so now in that case in the water bottle manufacturing company any water bottle which is like you know measure below the range of you know can say 4.9 to 5.1 a cm width we can call that as a defect so you should be able to measure that particular outcome and you can if if it is not in the acceptable range you can call that as a defect so here only we have this lower specification limit and upper specification limit so in the case of water bottle the width the lower specification limit we have maintained it as 4.9 cm the upper specification is 5.1 cm okay so anything beyond this level beyond this range we can call categorize that particular product that particular water bottle as a defect okay so next is cost of poor quality it's uh, also called as cgo pq this is one of the you know major uh, cost involved in any of the companies okay so any company or any organization wants to like you know uh, decrease wants to decrease their cost so that they'll be able to maximize their profit but they also want to like you know produce goods with a higher quality okay in that case people always want to like you know spend too much money on checking whether the products are uh, like you know defect free so for that they have to like appoint quality managers and um, you know they have to like you know, check whether the raw materials are like you know sourced correctly without um, any defects so for that the company has to spend money right so 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 you can call this poor quality cost or the cost which helps you know your process your products becomes perfect so that you will not have a error you will have a error free process error free product okay so this concept is like you know as proposed by an empo- employee of ibm james harrington in 1987 through his book poor quality cost okay so this total cost of quality is divided into four different types internal failure cost and external failure cost appraisal cost and prevention cost so when you are trying to like you know uh work on the poor quality products this internal failure cost and external failure cost comes into being in a trying to make your product defect free appraisal cost and prevention cost comes into being so let's see what which is which okay so when you say internal failure cost or the cost associated when the defects are like you know found when the customer receive the product after customer receives a product when the defect is found you can call it as external failure cost but when the defects are found before the customer receives the product is a internal failure cost for example you are manufacturing this water bottle and you found the width of the water bottle is you know 5.5 cm when you found that during a quality check inside the company you can call you can associate 
the cost involved in manufacturing that particular water bottle as an internal failure cost. Whereas, if the product, if the water bottle has reached the consumer, okay, in that case, it is called as an external failure cost because here the defected product has reached the customer already. The customer has received this product already. Okay, so appraisal cost or the cost which is incurred when you determine the degree of the quality of a product. For example, every time I might have to check whether the water bottle is in the right specifications. So for that, I might employ a person or I might be like, you know, have, having an automation machine through which the water bottle has to pass through. So if, if it is like, you know, little bigger than the allotted size, the water bottle may not, you know, pass through the particular machine. So I can like classify this a uh, defect product. Right. So in that case, either I have to like, you know, have an automated machine installed or I might have to like, you know, employ a person to check all this. So that kind of cost are called as appraisal cost because you're appraising whether the product is a defect or not. OK, so next one is a prevention cost. So when you when you're trying to like prevent this kind of quality problems. Like maybe you're trying to like, you know, uh, use a very good raw material or when you're trying to like, you know, uh, um, produce with the high quality machines. So you can uh, using high skilled labor. So that kind of cost comes under prevention cost. OK, so these are the cost of good quality because you're trying to like, you know, prevent and check. So when you, when you know when things have already happened when a product is already like manufactured with defects, that comes at the cost of poor quality. Okay, I believe you got a good understanding of these four different types of poor quality cost and I mean quality cost, two poor quality and two good quality. Okay, so in the olden days, people used to believe you know when you have to like produce products or have a process which of very high quality, it involves high cost. Actually, you know, it's completely wrong because when you're trying to like produce a product, which is like uh, with very good quality, and when it reaches the customer, the customer becomes highly satisfied and he, be he becomes a loyal customer. But if a product has been like, you know, produced with low quality, when, when the consumer uses it, they become highly dissatisfied and they may not like you know buy the product again so that the company will lose the customer forever right so it's actually you know it's not even you know helps helps to like you know earn more money it also like helps a business to th thrive so high quality is very very important so actually Right now, high quality is considered as a low cost so that you can be able to like retain your customers for a longer time. Okay, so we have, you know, earlier uh, people were using three sigma and four sigma. And they were uh, like, you know, thinking about having a high quality is a high cost business. But when they started moving towards five sigma and six sigma levels, you know, the cost for internal and external failure cost and prevention of pressure cost decreasing with higher quality. When you see the graph here, the quality is kind of increasing when the sigma level increases. So the quality is increasing, cost is decreasing, and sigma level is increasing. OK? So let's, uh, in the olden days, people were using, you know, three sigma and later they have moved on to you know four sigma five sigma and right now all the companies are using six sigma levels okay so this lower and upper specification limits act as a threshold for this process parameter okay so that's how it's been like you know calculated mu minus three sigma mu plus three sigma is the level for upper specification lower specification limits mu minus three sigma is your lower specification limit for three sigma process mu plus three sigma is a specification limit upper specification limit for 
three sigma process. Whereas here it is mu minus six sigma, mu plus six sigma. So you, you know mu is mean and six is standard deviation. Okay. So here in a six sigma company, so uh, when everything remains the same, only like the company has to spend only five percent of the selling uh, revenue in the cost of failure. Whereas in the, if they are following a six sigma process, they have to like you know spend fifteen to twenty five percentage of the revenue on the cost of failure. Okay, on the appraisal cost or on the prevention cost or external or internal failure cost, whatever it is. Okay, so here in the Six Sigma company, they always rely on checking to find the defects. Once the product is manufactured, they go and check whether the product manufacturer is uh, good or not, bad. But here, they define a reliable process. They work on the process very well so that this process will not give any bad products. So here, the Six Sigma company, they collect the data, they analyze and check what happened. But here, they use a process of define, measure, analyze, improve, control, that's one of the DMAC methodology. Or they use define, measure, analyze. Listen, that's a, another methodology. We'll be discussing about this methodology in detail, but in Six Sigma, they'll be using two different methodologies. Okay, We'll talk about this later. So let's move on to the next point. So here they do benchmarking against the competition. They check the, the, what's the competition is doing, and then just like set that as a target and work on it. So for example, I, I was spending 25% of my revenue in the cost of failure, but my competition is spending only you know 15%. So here they just you know keep that as a benchmark. Whereas here they benchmark themselves. They check what's best in the world in in, the, in terms of you know. In failure, and then they benchmark against that. Okay, they do not compare themselves with others. So here, ninety-nine percent is good, whereas here, ninety-nine percent is not good because we always go for ninety-nine point nine 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 six six percentage and six sigma. So here, they define CTQs internally. CTQ is critical to quality. What are the critical factors for the quality? What they just you know define that within each of the departments, whereas here. It is different. It, they define that with the customer. So they uh, they know okay. Which um, for example, if you buy a laptop, we know the battery should last for five years or, or a year or two. So they give warranty for like two, one year, two years, three years, right? So this critical to quality is like you know inform the customers. Is is informed to customers. Whereas here with the Sigma company, it is not informed. It is like it's kept within the company. Okay. So now we're just going to confirm the three sigma with six sigma and check like what happens if we are going to follow three sigma and six sigma for the same product. So when you're like, you know, do that for a postal service, 20,000 posts will be lost per hour, whereas here only seven posts are lost per hour. So when you're using it for, you know, uh, water pumping machines, People get unsafe drinking for water for almost 15 minutes per day, whereas here it's one minute per seven minutes. Okay. So if you are following three sigma for a hospital, 5,000 incorrect surgical op operations happens per week in the whole world, whereas here it's 1.7 incorrect surgical operations. And here, if this happens, two landings in the airport go wrong per day, whereas here, every five years, one landing go wrong. OK? So every year, two like wrong drug prescription happen, whereas here, 68 wrong drug prescriptions happen. So check. So obviously, now, when we compare these results with six sigma and um, three sigma, you obviously have to go for Six Sigma. So here, even though the Six Sigma is like, you know, 19.9996% good, whereas here it's 19%. Things look good. When you compare, it's like, you know, just 0.9966%, but still it makes a very big difference. 
okay this is what i've been like talking about for a long time now we were able to see that you know visually so when you like you know plot the graph for six sigma we have mean in the middle and with the three, you know, three sigma we were allowing three deviations plus three plus minus three sigma whereas here we are allowing six deviations okay so with the three sigma we were allowing three 2700 defects per million whereas with six sigma we are allowing 3.4 defects only per million so here we are getting 99.9966 percent here we are getting 99 percent okay so this is what i mean okay so here the deviation is mu plus three sigma and here's mu minus three sigma for six sigma here this side so the upper limit it is mu plus six sigma it is mu minus six sigma okay hopefully you're able to like understand this better right now okay so i have these levels from one to six okay for one sigma we got a an equality percentage of 68.27 percentage with you know 317,300 defects per million for two sigma we are getting 95.45 it's a very good improvement when compared to the one sigma but here it's 45,500 defects for three sigma we got 99.73 is 2700 for four sigma it's 99.99367 parts effect with Five sigma we got nine nine double nine four three percent zero point five seven. With six sigma we got nine nine point triple nine triple nine eight percent. It's you know zero point zero zero two parts per million. You see the difference for the sigma score. Okay. So yes, all those numbers and everything looks good, but how we can make it possible? What are the other things that affects here? What are the key success factors for the Six Sigma? Okay, so first we have to have a committed leadership. So maybe like, you know, uh, the production department is like very much willing to like produce products which are defect free, but you know, the top management should be able to understand this and then, you know, sponsor that and, you know, propagand that and talk about this to the customers and understand the customers you know uh, satisfaction level on, on the quality everything has to be done okay so this has to be like you know integrated with all other things it's not only it's not only the, um, you know responsibility of the production department to follow six sigma it also has to be involved in the strategy and the goals of the organization and then you know this can be like you know integrated with the HR policies so that they can just work on performance surprising for each of the employees. Okay, so when they were able to like produce products with very less defects, maybe that can be integrated with their appraisal systems. Okay, and then you are able to like, you know, formulate a process. I mean, always, you know, everything happens. You have to procure raw materials and then you have to like check and then you have to like, you know, um, take it to different processes, you know, and then and then you you manage you turn them into some other product and then you assemble so there's a lot of process involved right so uh, uh, while defining this process six sigma always has to be like integrated with that okay and then uh, we always like uh, look into what happens in the market right we re research we have to do research on the market and then identify what is the customer need what is uh, what is how the market is like you know evolving how it is like you know dynamics of it so all this has to be like you know checked and accordingly the six sigma factors has to be like you know implemented and after all things you know you have implemented but still you know so when, when the customer is like getting a very good product with very less defects he'll be happy and you will be getting a good revenue but but think about the employees they might be like you know working too hard to work on, to produce a product which is defect free but and so they also has to be like you know identified the, the employees who, who like you know produce very good products with less defects has to be identified and remunerated accordingly with good rewards 
and finally a training so this is all can be like you know done only if all the employees and the customers are like you know informed about the policies and and especially the employees has to be trained on how to work on this six sigma so that they achieve very good results okay so right now we will look into the six sigma measures so here we will be like you know talking about two different concepts process capability and process capability indices it's an index okay so process capability is the ability of the process to conform to the specification and is a measure of process performance the fundamental difference between all the quality initiatives with six sigma is the target which is set by the six sigma for process capability okay so always process capability value is 2 okay okay for six sigma the value is 2 so here we will be like you know looking into lower specification limit upper specification limit so first to understand the six sigma measures first you have to like you know understand what is defects per unit so it's nothing but a um, formula so number of defects which is which is discovered totally divided by number of units which is produced in a factory so these are defects per unit Okay, next one is defects per million opportunities. We discuss this already. So number of defects which is discovered divided by opportunities forever multiplied by one million. Okay, how many defects which are discovered and how many opportunities are there totally? Okay, maybe for example, I'm, I'm manufacturing a cell phone. Maybe like I might you know make two hundred mistakes while manufacturing a cell phone. So I have found only one mistake which means 1 divided by 200 multiplied by 1 million okay because that's how it works okay hope you are able to like understand this so let's let's uh, try to check how this process capability is calculated okay here we will be like you know understanding the lower and upper specification limit Upper specification limit is USL, lower specification limit is LSL. So lower specification limit is actually a, is used to capture the process performance. If, if the output is like, you know, value which is less than a LSL, it will be classified as a defect. And it, same thing goes for LSL as well. If, if any value is higher than a upper uh, specification limit, it will be classified as a defect. I used a water bottle exp, uh, example for this. So the capability index is calculated by the formula USL minus LSL divided by six sigma. So here we'll be like using a banking example. So imagine a student is like applying loan and they usually it is like processing 26 working days. Okay. And the specification limit is like you, the standard is 26 working days, but you know the range is 20 to 32 working days. So here 32 minus 20 that is our upper minus lower specification limit divided by 6 multiplied by sigma sigma is our deviation is two working days okay 6 multiplied by 2 so we get 12 divided by 12 which is 1 so here the cp index the process capability index is 1 okay we are using the formula USL minus LSL divided by six sigma. So if a CP index is one, we'll be having a 2700 defects per million opportunities. If it is 1.33, we will be having 63 defects per million opportunities. If it is 1.5, we'll be having 6.8 defects per million opportunities. If it is two, we'll be having 0 0.002 defects per million opportunity. So this becomes our six sigma level. So this is our six sigma level, right? So the CP index for six sigma is two. So this is our three sigma level. We have, we have got 2,700 defects per million opportunities, which is our three sigma level. Okay. So here we'll be like looking in estimating a process capability index or a sample. 
okay for many process this uh, you know the mean may not be like you know found between the lsl and usl but but still we'll be able to like you know work this out with the process capability index okay so here we have x bar which is an average outcome from a sample and s is your standard deviation for a sample for a sample we are using uh, s instead of sigma and x bar instead of mu okay so minimum of usl minus x bar divided by 3s comma x bar minus lsl divided by 3s so x bar we have 25 days yes is 3 days so we are just you know substituting this 32 minus 25 divided by 9 cross 3 so 3 cross 3 25 minus 20 divided by 3 cross 3 Okay. It's 20 to 32 days, right? Remember, we are using the same example. Upper limit here and lower limit here. So we got 0.77 comma 0.55. So we have to take the minimum of this value. So 0.55 is our capability index value. I hope you are able to like you know understand this. So now we'll be like you know discussing about the six sigma methodologies. As I told you, there are two different methodologies. Okay, DMAC and DMADV. So for example, if you are using six sigma method to improve the current capabilities of a existing process. You are already like you know have a process. You want to improve that. For that, if you are using sigma, sigma, you have to go for DMAC process. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. But if you are use, if you are trying to you know create a new process or a redesign a new process, or a, you are trying to like you know start a company and then manufacture product completely new. In that case, you have to go for this process. DMA DV, define, measure, analyze, design, and verify. Okay, so since you're doing it for the first time, you 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 are like you know changing these two things. Okay, first you define and then measure, analyze, then design the pro process and verify it. It is here you are defining it, measuring it, analyzing and improving it, controlling. Since it's already there, you're trying to improve and control. It is here you're trying to design and verify. Okay, let's like you know get in detail about the first process dma ic most of the times we'll be like you know looking in only in dma ic process okay this approach is like it's proposed by general enactment okay define measure analyze improve and control this is very very important approach in six sigma so first in the um, six, in the Six Sigma methodology, first you have to analyze which, I mean, check which product I have to, you know, uh, implement Six Sigma on. Where, where is things going wrong? Which project needs attention? Which team is not performing better? All this has to be like, you know, worked on. So this is a step-by-step -step iterative procedure used to like, you know, solve the problem. Okay, it's a structured problem solving methodology which works through five different phases so that you know the managers will be able to obtain solution to a problem which they have. This project management approach is used at each phase. Okay. So first you have to like you know define the goals for each of the phase, and then you'll be you'll be trying to you know apply this methodology so that you can like finish each of the five phases okay so depending on the scope of the projects that you are in you have to like you know uh, cla classify a project as you know green belt project black belt project something like that okay for that uh, only people who, who got certified with six sigma will be able to like you know uh, take this project and implement this so this green belt projects are a very small improvement projects in which the projects can be completed within three to six months using simple tools 
whereas you know black belt projects are very big improvement projects which requires more skilled project team and they have to use sophisticated analytical tools to solve the problem so this is going to be taking a longer time okay green belt projects takes uh, lesser time and they use very uh, you know basic tools to solve the problem whereas black belt projects takes a longer duration and use very complex analytical methods okay the first here you have to work on defining the problem or identify the project or the, uh, identify the team which needs this okay so here you might be having an unknown solution so here always you have to work on defining your critical to quality ctq okay and then you go for next stage measure so here you try to identify the process and what are the problems that you know the project is facing and what are the process outputs and what is the response variable you will be finding out the response variable y the in dependent variable y you will find this out in the measure phase so here you actually you know try to categorize the process characterize the process what happens in there try to understand that okay you collect data and try to find out what is the baseline sigma score that you need all these things comes in okay whereas in the next three stages you try to optimize the process you are trying to analyze what's happening in there and improve and control the process right so you you try to find out what are the independent variables which affect this response variable or a different variable y okay so in the analyze phase you establish the relationship between the ctqs critical to quality factors and and critical to process what are the things which affects the ctqs so you are trying to identify the root cause of the problem in the analyze phase okay and in the improve phase you generate solutions either to remove the root cause or reduce the impact of the root cause you select the cost effective solution and then you you try to like you know pilot this uh, process and then you measure that improvement okay so you have, you have already like found out everything and you have implemented it already in the improve phase okay you you are just when you say implement you are just piloting it okay and then check whether it is like you know working or not by measuring it in the in the control phase you develop the plan and then you sustain the gains and then you will be able to like you know convert that improvement into procedure and then you are in, in, in informing the team or the relevant team members to follow the right procedure you creating the flow chart and then you you help them to like you know go with that so here at the end of the control process you will be able to like identify a mathematical relationship between your dependent and independent variables y equal to function of x so it can be a regression or in any equation you're trying to find out a mathematical relationship here so most of the times it is uh, you know they go with regression okay so there is lot of activities that happens in each of phases of this you know things so i have explained all this here so what are the tools that we will be like using in all this five phases we will be using anova we will be using box plots but in the define uh, in identifying phase we will be trying to understand what's the problem here so we, we just go for brainstorming and we go for we, we use cause and effect diagrams correlation regression we go for the design experiments before and after for controlling so for, for that we go for design of experiments we, we go for various graphs and charts like histograms and many pie charts and many more and we do hypothesis testing and we go for pareto analysis i believe you guys know what is pareto analysis we are trying to find out you know what you know what causes the 80% of the problem most of the times you know very few causes leads to 80% of the problem right so that 20% of the problems leads to 80% of the causes that will be like you know figure out through pareto analysis and we'll be using process capability studies control plans we do process flow diagrams quality function deployment response surface methods sketch diagrams and at the end when everything goes right you'll be able to write down the standard operating procedures sops which means like you define the whole process and write out all the steps 
documented as SOPs. And then you go for statistical process control. This is the, I mean, this is a complete, you know, uh, topic altogether. Okay, so just understand. So these kind of methodologies are used in Six Sigma. So we, I have just explained everything here for uh, define, measure, analyze, improve, control. So whatever that I've been like you know discussing right now. So the success of this uh, you know uh, Six Sigma project is actually depending on choosing the right problem or choosing the right project. Although Six Sigma is a successful methodology, there are several instances where Six Sigma did not give desired performance. So it is very necessary that we understand how we should decide whether the identified problem is actually a good application for the Six Sigma. So, so uh, this is like you know uh, done on you know this has to be like evaluated. The project has to be evaluated before we go to this procedure whether this will uh, Six Sigma will help to like you know solve the problem. So what are the other two kids that you know that leads to quiet improvement? So we have to use statistics as uh, I've showed you in the toolkit. Most of them yeah, belongs to like you know uh, basic and advanced statistic tools from scatter plot until regression. And then we have to like you know work on reliability analysis everywhere we'll be measuring, which is part of the stack. And then we're trying to you know control the process and then we're trying to improve the process that we'll be able to get good results and then we'll be finally implementing it and whole success for the project is, is achieved only through teamwork so the teamwork also has to be like you know optimized in this case so at the end you have to like you know take a customer survey and, and feedback from the customer so that they'll be able to like you know are they satisfied with the results and lean thinking okay lean thinking is actually a um, you know uh, thinking about optimized methodologies uh, in, in the day to day operations even though things have been optimized few things might be changed still you may be able to like optimize the process so when you always have to be in that thought process so for any six sigma project it has to be you know uh, having a different team uh, members. So as I uh, told you already, difference between you know green belt project and black belt project. Green belt project is like you know completed very early, and you will be using very basic toolkit. Whereas black belt it's, it's, it's takes a longer duration compared to the green belt, and then you will be using advanced techniques. Okay. So, but if you are like taking any organization, and if you want to implement Six Sigma uh, throughout the whole you have to have uh, members with green belts, members with black belts, master black belts, and project champions. So anybody can become a Six Sigma expert, but they have to, uh, you know, get into a course. And then if they like, you know, study for a level, they, they'll be able to like get a green belt. And then next level, they have to like clear, and then they get a black belt. It's a certification level. And then they'll be able to become a master. And then they become a project champion. This is the level in, in Six Sigma certification. So if any organization or MNC is uh, you know, uh, trying to implement Six Sigma for each of the project, there should be a project champion. There should be master Six black belt, black belt and green belt only. They'll be, then they will be able to like, you know, implement a Six Sigma project. OK, so uh, we will be, I have a simple case study where Six Sigma can be applied and then a problem can be solved. Okay, so we'll be like discussing this in the later class. I'll be sharing this, you know, the contents of this case study here. Okay, so it has all the five phases, define, measure, analyze, you know, everything here. All the five phases we hear. Okay, so we'll be like discussing about this in the next class. Okay, so so far, if you got any doubts, we can discuss right now because I don't want to like burden you with the whole thing with the case study as well right now. If you got any questions, we can just like you know discuss right now. <laughs>